I want to announce here that your prayers were answered. Meetings like I, we had when I was first starting the ministry many years ago. I have never, we just couldn't even seat the people and get fairgrounds and everything else. There'd be enough there at 3 o'clock to fill the place up. They'd have to shut the gates and let them in. We wouldn't be there until 7. See? Just thousands pouring from everywhere. Just, and uh, i taken the last five nights in the last meeting and just built around the Word, begin to realize what a power the Word has, see? because the Word is God. God. See? In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was Amen. God. Amen. And the Word Hallelujah. was made flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. Now, Hebrews 4 said that, that the Word of God is sharper than a two-aged sword. The, the Word of God is sharper than even piercing to the sunder of the bone and the cutting and uh, a discerner of the thoughts of the mind, the heart. See? Amen. That's what the Word of God. Then if there is a gift of where we can just relax ourselves and the Word itself, that is Christ who is Word, comes Amen. into us and discern the thoughts of the mind. As you Amen. Say. Amen. Hallelujah. How wonderful then, see what he did in the way he blessed us. And then, uh, the, that I feel that building it around, uh, that word for four nights. Just let the people sit quiet and then just relax and the Holy Spirit would call people and do things out in the audience. And then on the last evening, last Sunday afternoon, I seen one of the greatest healing lines I've ever seen in America. And they were, I sent Billy down with a hundred and cards and Gene with a hundred and Leo with a hundred and Roy with a hundred. Just give out all the cards by five hundred. And then after they had seen the word take a hold and what it would do, then staying right on that word now, bring them to the platform and I seen men and women throw away their crutches and so forth and be healed before they even get to the platform. Oh, Just to yeah. see, see the word of God had done one out out through there and embedded itself in those five messages or four messages in their hearts till they believed it with all their heart. Then the only thing they had to do is have some kind of a little contact. See? Amen. Something other. And it was a reality. And just as soon as they'd hit that platform, they'd be healed right there on the platform. That's where they get across the platform. I believe, Brother Jerry, you all know Brother Ed, Brother Ed Hooper, don't you? Are you from Arkansas down there? Um, he met, he was with me in the early parts of the early ministry. He said, this seems like old times. <laughs> when it, when it used to years ago. And there were people that had tumors that would was that like that come back well. Blind, deaf, dumb, all kinds of things that our Lord did. Never even have to touch the people. The word going forth to do it. Then the Lord gave me a message that I'd like to speak at the church sometime. When I get back, get a chance off. I'm awfully busy now. I've got to leave again tomorrow, waiting for this girl to come. And even before I even got my suitcase in the house, there was somebody there, and I haven't sat down since. Or I haven't even talked to my family since I've been here. And it's it's really a strain. And I got that solicit your all's prayers for me too, that the Lord will help me to hold up. Now, see our. Brother here, real, real sick, laying on this cot. And we, uh, someone's coming in a little bit while for us to go to Louisville. I want you to remember the prayer to a <clears throat> fine young lady that she is about 18 years old. She's a twin and, uh, a Christian girl in school. And the other girls would talk about her, you know, and the two girls and tell them that how they were, what part of life they were missing and how they should uh, live like the rest of the girls. And one girl was able just to override it. This other one had a complex and she felt real bad about it and just kept going away and drifting uh, farther back and worrying about it. And finally, she's got a mental breakdown and they, uh, she's in an insane ward. Her mother and father's coming just a little bit in Crandall, Indiana. <clears throat> to go over to this institution where they're going to try to send her to Madison tomorrow. Now, the uh, the girl, there's no physical 
break in the girl. She there's nothing physically. She's perfectly healthy, but it's uh, hard to explain it, and it really cannot be explained. But what it is, her spirit has wandered. Thing. Now uh, you you got to catch her spirit and bring it back to the place. See, there's as we just got through speaking here a few weeks ago on how that the human system operates, how that there's five senses that you enter the body by, and then uh, five avenues, we call it. Five avenues, such as, as conscience, imagination, and so forth, we enter the soul by. And then when you enter the spirit, there's only one avenue, and that is through self-will, which bases it back like man was created, you can receive it or you can just let it go. You can accept Christ as Savior or just let him go. And you're still by that tree, that one of life and one of death. Every human being is set before that tree or God would be unjust to put one there and then not give the other one the equal chance to, re to choose right or wrong. And each one of us has that opportunity. Also in that, the Spirit we can be healed or we cannot be healed. Now, it's not because that there's not, that we haven't been healed according to God. We have. For the covenant is unconditional and he has already purchased our healing. Therefore, our healing is, is to us. It's ours. Now, it's whether we will take this avenue to believe it or this avenue to just uh, not believe it. Now, there's only that one way we can walk into the presence of God. Now, this child, beautiful, her mother is a girlfriend. I, my, I used to be one of my girlfriends. She was a nice little lady, come out of a real strict Nazarene home, sweet little girl. And she's got a lovely husband. I know him, too, real well. The boy married her. And she just, they raised those children to serve the Lord. And... Uh, put them in school, and they were really grounded in Christ, not to do the things that's wrong. But there it went, just on a break, just like I looked just a few moments ago and gazed back to a little boy. I had the very same thing, exactly. And that uh, we went down there one night, Brother Wrights and Arville was just, just in a complete break. And he, you know, when he would try to run me out of the house, as good a friend as Arville and I are, just real, like I'd be his father, I married his father and mother together, and he'd just jump up and scream, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here, see? Now what we had to do there was go out into the line of spirit and catch that boy's spirit, see? A lot of grief had come to his little heart, he's young, and he'd seen a lot, and just brought him right back to the place where he should be, you see? In a few days, he was, he was all right. Now that's the same thing you got to do on this. I have seen it, and I know that it is true. But now, just I, I request you all to pray now that, that God will help me to find this little girl out into a place where she don't know where she's at, then bring her back to her place. And that avenue comes to faith. See, she can't have faith for herself. She don't know where she's at or anything. See, it's got to take our faith here. And now, in that that power of the resurrection of Christ. Amen. Which he give us the opportunity. Uh, that's where you, in one way, the word of God pierces the sinner. And it has to go beyond the preaching of the word going forth. That's the reason I wanted to speak a little bit this morning before praying for the sick. Remember the vision not long ago the Lord gave me? You know, about seeing the other side. You remember that morning when I was testifying about seeing the other side? Well... That was true. And a full gospel businessman's voice has published that article and put a picture on the back of the page here. And it's got a little inject down here at the bottom, a little part here at the bottom speaking of the ministry, which this is a international paper printed in many different languages. And they um, dedicated the front page and the first on that vision. See? And I got them up here and I wish you would... Uh, Pick up one and you could um, uh, read it. And yep, I didn't know how many would be down with the brethren this morning. And, you, uh, and then if you happen to fail one, we'll just go to office. They have them there to office. And uh, 
They let us have a group of them about keep pressing on. See, and that's all in my heart. All I can hear is keep pressing on. Just beyond the the river, there is a a better land, and let's keep pressing till we meet that land. Now, uh, I think they got your a dedication of Brother Stricker, Sister Stricker's little one. So that uh, how many does that make now, Sister Stricker? Six little fellows. That's a lovely little family, and. Uh, so they are with our missionaries over in in Africa recently to return back, and all their children's pretty little fellows, and I can see this one is also as they're to bring it up this morning for our dedicational service. Where's Teddy? Aunt, uh, Teddy, would you come up here to the piano just a minute, son, and, and let's uh, have our song of little song. You know our little song, I believe we sang, Bring Them In. Is that right? Bring Them In from the Fields of Sin. And that's the reason we play this, because that we, with all that we can, parents is bringing them for dedication. We're dedicating them to the Lord and bringing them in while they're yet babies that they'll not stray out into that field of sin. Bring them in. That's just... Do you know what, Teddy? Let's just sing one verse up there. Bring them in, bring them in, bring them in from the fields of sin. Bring them in. If there's another one, why just bring them out?
bless her and her father and her mother and her loved ones and may they live long, happy lives in your service. In Jesus' name, amen. Boy. I love little children, don't you? Amen. How many ever did hear the vision the Lord gave me? Let's see your hands up and never. Brother Everett, you got your little book there. Perhaps maybe you just read it for them right here just for the next moment or two. I'll leave it right here, if you will. The other morning I was lying on my bed. I had just awoke from sleep and I placed my hands behind my head and relaxed with my head on the pillow. Then I began to wonder what it will be like on the other side. I realized that I have lived more than half my life if I live to be as old as my people, and I wanted to do more for the Lord before I left this life. I heard a voice saying, You are just starting. Press the battle. Keep pressing as I lay these pondering they lay pondering these words, I thought that I just imagined that I heard a voice. Again the voice said, Press the battle, keep going, keep going. Still unbelieving, I thought that possibly I had spoken the words myself. I placed my lips between my teeth and held my hand over my mouth and listened. The voice spoke again, Just keep pressing. If you only knew what is at the end of the road, I seem to hear the music and words of an old familiar song. I am homesick and blue, and I want to see Jesus. I would like to hear those arbor bells chime. It would brighten my path and banish all fears. Lord, let me look past the curtain of time. Then the voice asked, Would you like to see just beyond the curtain? I answered, It would help me so much. What happened, I cannot say. Whether I was in the body or whether I, it was a translation, I do not know. But it was unlike any vision I have ever had. I could see the place to which I was taken, and I could see myself lying back there upon my bed. I said, this is a strange thing. There were great numbers of people, and they came running to me, crying, Oh, our precious brother." First came young women apparently in their early twenties, and as they would embrace me, they said, Our precious brother, young men in the brilliance of young manhood with eyes glistening like stars on a darkened night, with teeth as white as pearls, embraced me, saying, Our precious brother. Then I noticed that I too had the, had become young again. I looked at myself, there and turned and looked back at my old body lying on the bed with my hands behind my head. I said, I don't understand this. As I began to try to comprehend the place where I was, I began to realize that there was no yesterday and no tomorrow there. No one seemed to get tired. As a multitude of the most beautiful young women I have ever seen threw their arms around me, I discovered there was only a great love that overwhelmed me and no physical attraction as in the human behavior. I noticed these young women all wore their hair down to their waistline and their skirts went down to their feet. After this, Hope, my first wife, hugged me and said, My precious brother. Then another young woman hugged me and Hope turned and hugged the young woman. I said, I don't understand this. This is something entirely different from our human love. I don't want to go back to that old body on the bed. Then a voice spoke to me. This is what you preached that the Holy Ghost is. This is perfect love. Nothing can enter here without it. Next I was taken up and seated on a high place. All around me were great numbers of men and women to, in the bloom of youth. They were crying with joy, Oh, our precious brother, we are so happy to see you here. I thought, I'm not dreaming, for I can see these people and I can see my body lying back there on the bed. The voice spoke to me, You know it is written in the Bible that the prophets were gathered with their people. 
I said, yes, I remember that in the scriptures. But there are not this many Branhams. The voice replied, these are not Branhams. These are your, these are your converts, the ones you have led to the Lord. Some of these women you think are so young and beautiful were more than 90 years old when you led them to the Lord. No wonder they are crying out, my precious brother. Then the multitude cried together, If you hadn't gone forth with the gospel, we wouldn't be here. I asked, Oh, where is Jesus? I want to see him. The people replied, He is just a little higher. Someday he will come to you. You were sent as a leader, and when God comes, he will judge you according to your teaching. I asked, Does Paul and Peter have to stand this judgment also? The answer was yes. I said, I have preached what they preached. I did not divert from it to one side or the other. Were they baptized in the name of Jesus? I did too. Were they taught the baptism in the Holy Spirit? I did too. Whatever they taught, I taught also. We know that, the people cried, and we know that we are going back to earth with you sometime. Jesus will come and judge you according to the words you preached us. Then you will present us to him, and all together we will go back to earth to live forever. I asked, do I have to go back to earth now? They answered, yes, but keep pressing on. As I began to move from that beautiful, joyful place as far as my eyes could see, people were coming towards me to embrace me, crying, my precious brother. Suddenly I was back on the bed again. I said, Oh, God, help me. Never let me compromise with the Word. Let me stay straight on the Word. I don't care what anyone else does, Lord. Let me press on to that beautiful, joyful place. I am more convinced than ever in my life that it will take perfect love to enter that place. There was no jealousy, no tiredness, no sickness, no old age, no death. Only supreme beauty and joy. Hallelujah. Mm. Whatever you do, lay aside everything else until you get perfect love. Get to where you can love everybody, even every enemy. No matter if the plane is rocking, the lightning is flashing, or the guns of the enemy are upon you, these things do not matter. Get perfect love. If you are not saved, accept Jesus Christ as your Savior now. If you have not been baptized in water, be baptized now. If you have not received the baptism in the Holy Spirit, receive it now. Press on in that perfect love, which will take you to that beautiful and joyful place beyond the curtain of time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. That's, I thought maybe some of you would get to read it. And uh, if you haven't got the little book, why, well, uh, you can have it. Then at the right at the bottom of the page, you made a little insert about the ministry. You know, or you, no, sir, not. Right at the bottom, if you read that, right at the bottom, a little insert at the bottom. Now, that goes pretty near in every language under the heavens, you see, to, to be read around the world. Now, what, what, or you say, what would you say that, Brother Branham, before you pray for the sick? It's because of this that we might know that our efforts are not in vain. See, we must approach God through that channel of love and faith. Faith takes us to the channel. Love is the one that takes us in. Pardon me. Now, do you think that God would... I was tell you, your faith gets to the spot now. Do you think that... What would you think now if all of the efforts that the this tabernacle and these groups of people here has put forth for the kingdom of God. There's many here that's lounged their children for the kingdom of God. There's many here that's gone without clothes for the kingdom of God. There's many who's rolled through storms and walked with no shoes on their feet to get to the tabernacle here. That's right. For the kingdom of God. Could you imagine an artist painting a great picture, beautiful till it's sublime, and then just tear it up? There'd be something wrong with the artist. Could you imagine a composer write a song until it's sublime? And then his, his, his music up? There'd be something wrong with the composer. See? There's nothing wrong with God. 
God don't make a thing like this just to tear it up and throw it away. It's for His kingdom. It's for His glory. Each one of us play a part in this picture and in this song. We're a part of the kingdom of God. And that is that we can play our parts as long as we realize where we are positionally belong in this place and then stay right there in that place. In one place we know it's in love because that's what makes up the picture. Amen. Now it's hard when you see these visions like this and things to understand what's, what's on the other side. I wish I know. The man gave this little insert down there to say that prophets of old, how they saw these visions and so forth, and how that the day beyond even what we can't understand it, but the Lord has let us press into that and to see what that is. Now, friends, I wasn't asleep and I, just between you and I and this church here, I wasn't in a vision. I know what a vision is. Some here, just last week, some of many 30 times a night it would happen. You can imagine the weight that's on you. It makes you nervous, of course. What if you went to a meeting like that and just the responsibility is the meeting went right or not was on you? Just, just the responsibility. You've got to answer each mis- minister, each question, each everything. The meeting goes right or not. It lays just responsibility on you alone. Look what that would do to you. And there's some of my associates just simply selling books and so forth. Gets them nervous, they'd have to go home. See, lay down. Wouldn't come to church that night. I, oh, it's just terrible. Like my daughter-in-law, a lovely little Christian girl, Lois. Just, just the going in the meetings, just sort of for eight weeks or seven weeks, constantly like that. Just had to lay in bed for a day or two. See, with no responsibility. Billy just to give out a few prayer cards and just tore to pieces. But see, the whole weight lays up on me. I have to depend on you to pray for me. Amen. Besides that, they claim that at 20 minutes of, of preaching under inspiration is compared with eight hours of hard work to your body. I preach them two to three hours a night, sometimes three times a day. See? And then what about one vision? One vision made our Lord Jesus get weak. That's right. The Bible said a woman touched his garment. Made him get weak. Well, if one vision would make him weak, him the Son of God, what about me, a sinner saved by grace? What would do 30 of them in one night? See, it's, if we just stop and think it's beyond any human, a human body can't stand that. I'd be in an insane institution somewhere, butting my head against the walls. See, it's, it's such a weakness that you can't... It's an inward weakness, see, that just kills you out. Now, but what would you press then? I might say this, I see Brother and Sister Cox there, Rodney and his wife... And sister, from back in there, new converts, there is a land just out in there somewhere that if you ever can just think in your mind and get a view of it, it's the most glorious thing. It's worth every effort that we put forth. Now, for praying for the sick, I might say this. What if a little baby before it's born, let's take that, a little baby that's lived in the womb of the mother for these nine months, and that little baby could think. They would say, you know what? They tell me I'm fixing to be born. Well, what will I do out there? I don't know nothing but this place that I live here. I derive my strength from inside. And how will I make a living out there? They tell me there's a sun that shines. They tell me that the people there walk around. And uh, I don't know nothing but this, this place here. This is all I know. Right here in the, in the womb of my mother. Here's where I was brought in. Here's all I know is right in this womb. And they tell me that it's just room times room. Well, that little baby would be scared to death to be born. Is that right? It would be scared to death because it's coming into a place it knows nothing about, which is supreme. Millions of times supreme to where it's been living. It wouldn't know what it's all about. they say, how, what am I going to do? It would be scared to death to be born. But we who live out here... Well, we as was back there one time, we would by no means go back there. We wouldn't want to go back in the mother womb again. See? No. We wouldn't want to do that. And that's just the way it is when we are dying, friend. Oh, God. See? You're being born into a place. You've never been there. You can't understand it. How great it is. How how's it going to be out there? I... And the only thing that makes me realize, or you realize, is that little touch of life, like the Spirit come into the baby in its mother's womb. 
See, it's the only way that we could understand what is that great land out yonder. Amen. When there's no sickness, no sorrow, no death, no old age, no nothing. Oh, Amen. my. Well, when you once get over there, you never want to come back to a place like this. No more than a baby want to go back to its mother's womb. See? It's so much greater on the other side. See? Out there. We can't understand it. Certainly not. We can't... Well, how that little baby is beyond any thinking, so are we beyond any understanding of what that would be out there. See? Because we're in the womb of the earth. Ready to be born sometime into a new kingdom. Amen. Into a new world. And that's the way... And I feel about those visions and things like that, or that whatever happened to me that day when I crossed over just on the outside and seen what that was and then come back into here. Amen. Could you imagine being a baby and, and uh, had a, a knowledge what how glorious this was to walk around and see the trees are blooming, the birds are singing, and sunshine and a life like this, and then have to be confined into a womb? Why, you wouldn't want to go back at all. Well, then... We, our, our thinking would be numb up the side of trying to think of what that is over there when the Scripture says, I have not seen, ears not heard, or either has ever entered into the heart of man what God has for them in store that love him. See? So we know that it's glorious on the other side. Someday, death, what we call death, will give us a new birth. And we'll come into the other world on the other side. Hallelujah. Brother George, you won't be old and crippled around over there. And Brother and Sister Spencer and some, like some of us, is older and so forth. It will be young there forever. This old, this robe of flesh, I'll drop and rise Amen. and seize the everlasting prize and shout while passing through the air. Farewell, farewell. Amen. 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 No, no more long nights of rain. No more this enter into that young joyful age to be there not for just a year or 50 years or a million years but we've been there a hundred billion years we won't even be started at all that's it so why shouldn't we be happy this morning why shouldn't we rejoice why shouldn't we take a, a advantage of every great thing God has given us your divine healing why did Jesus strike to tear the picture up and say there's no such a thing to it he striped his body down there and Ribs showed through that by stripes we were healed. Amen. Let's not tear the picture up this morning. Let's embrace it, accept it. A brother and every one of you now is going to be prayed for. If you just stand around the altar while the message went forth a few moments ago through interpretation and tongues, that we lay hands on the sick and see the mighty works of God. Amen. Now, my brother, you don't have to stand up, brother, that lean on a cot. We'll come to you. But if there's any other sure to be prayed for, I'd like to stand around the altar while brother and I Pray and lay hands on the stick. You come right on now. And remember, you embrace that picture. By stripes we were healed. I don't understand it, Lord. Sure you don't. You're still in the womb of the earth yet. But he made those preparations and he wouldn't take... Why was he striped? Just to tear the picture up or tear the song up and throw it away? No, he was striped, wounded, and bled that we might be healed. And by that, we, his stripes, we are healed. Every one of us. Now... As you're coming, gathering around the altar for prayer. Now, a lot of this year, super duper American evangelism and talk about you got to do this, do that. There's one thing I want to be honest with you about, my friend. The thing way God heals is on the basis of service to Him. Amen. It's on the basis of service to Him. We must accept our healing on the basis of we will serve Him after we are healed. Now, the Bible said, confess your faults one to another. Pray one for the other, and you might be healed. See? It's on the basis you will serve God. Many of you here perhaps are in dying condition. And you, you must die if something doesn't take place. Then I want you in your heart. Now, we might anoint you with oil. We might pray over your pastor and I. Pray the prayer of faith. Do everything we can. But... It won't do no good until you yourself enter into fellowship with Christ. Amen. You've got to come to that fellowship that I, Lord. I see a, a, a young lady walking up there just now. She come here not long ago to the house with something like a tumor, a Hodges disease. And she's the Methodist by faith. I believe that's right. It's the sister. Uh, um, and she had a big lump in the side and... Now there she stands healed. 
I see Sister Weaver standing here is one of as bad a cancer cases that I've ever seen in all my life. The first thing I asked her, would she be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and confess right. her sins? When I took her in this water here, I had to hold her. She was the thin. Her arms, just little bitty things. And she was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's at least been ten years ago, hasn't it, sister? Sixteen years ago. Amen. Sixteen years of spare life because she was willing to come into obedience. One of the very best of doctors around here. Well, her own doctor told me. When I told him, he told him, said, she's healed. He said, oh, she'll die with cancer in a few weeks. Don't worry about that. She'll be gone. Another few weeks, she'll be gone. And it already just give her about a day to live. And here she is today after 16 years standing at the altar. Amen. What more could I say over and over and over and over? Now, God just doesn't do that for one of his children and doesn't do it for another children. He does it for all of his children. Whosoever will may come. If you're invited to him. Now, the prayer of faith shall save the sick. The Bible said that. Now, now if what I want you to do is confess your wrongs to God and say, Lord, heal me. If you have never been converted, give your hearts to Christ. And if you have never been baptized in water, in the name of Jesus Christ, there's a pool ready. Amen. And this little lady across the street here, when that infidel there was converted by it. When she's laying this in her home silver crest with TB dying. And when I went down there and the Lord gave a vision, said she's going to be healed, and he met me there the next morning, Mr. Andrews, and just bawled me out, said, a false hope like that upon that woman. I said, Mr. Andrews, it is not a false hope. The woman is a Christian, and when she gets able, she's coming to be baptized. And he said, she's dying. I said, I... How could she be sent home from Silvercrest? I said, sir, you're looking. You're what you're looking at. You're looking at what the doctor says. I'm looking at what God said. See? Amen. That's just a difference what you're looking at. See? You look at what the doctor says, you sure will die. But you've got to look at what God said. Whose word are you going to take? What if Abraham would have took the doctor's opinion of him being 100 years old and going to have a baby by his wife 90? What would he have done then? See why the doctor would have said the man's crazy. But God imputed it to him for righteousness because he believed God. See? Now you and the woman lived. She neglected being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ because I think she's kind of a Methodist or Presbyterian. She started getting sicker and sicker. And she come and got grace wherever it lived, right? Lives there, and her daughter does. Robe and come here and was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ with a fever, with diseases of lumps broke out all over her shoulder and everything with a fever of hundred and four. And was baptized right here in the name of Jesus Christ, and she lives just across the street from her. Maybe he's sitting here now. Look around and see if I can see her a few minutes ago. Uh, it's yeah. obedience, you see. It's not just going around out different with some of our brothers, just laying hands on this, that, and the other like that, and saying some kind of a super duper face to do it. That's not it. You've got to have genuine, solid Bible, Amen. Holy Ghost faith. Hallelujah. It will not it last. Will it's not lasting. That's the reason I can thank the Lord that He has helped me so far. The healings that's taken place has been genuine because they're genuinely built upon, thus saith the Lord. Amen. Therefore, they will stand. Amen. Now, now, as the little Sunday school, I was waiting just a minute talking to you. They got their places positioned so we could get quiet now. We just got a, a couple of minutes. We'll pray there praying. Now, I want each one of you to confess your wrongs to God and promise God that you'll serve Him and do everything that you can and Pastor and I are going to pray and come lay hands on you, and you're sure to get healed if you believe it. Amen. How could those people on crutches and deaf and dumb and blind last Sunday afternoon uh, just walk up to the platform and throw away their crutches? Oh. Walk up to the platform, my eyes come open. Oh, like that. Hundreds times hundreds of them. Well, I was so weak, I almost had to be packed from the place of standing and passing by. See? A line that would reach from here to Jeffersonville High School almost. Lined up. Come through the line, and I don't know if there's one of them past you, but what was healed? See? Because they come upon bases of real, genuine Christian faith and believing. It has to happen. Now, bow your heads, everyone, and help me pray for them. Lord Jesus, we bring to you this morning this audience standing here waiting of sick, afflicted, tormented children. Hallelujah. They are beyond any hope, many of them, Lord, of the doctor's cure, especially this 
man laying here on this cot. It's either your grace or he comes out of the world in a few days. And no doubt there may be some standing along the altar here with heart attacks waiting him and diseases and afflictions that would tear him apart. There's only one thing, Father, that can save them. That's go beyond the five senses here of this body where the doctors have tried faithfully, no doubt, to save their life. Diseases, cancer, TB, heart trouble. And with all the patching and tubes and materials and, and, and germ-fighting uh, medicine, the enemy crowds right on in to take their lives. And I've expressed, Lord, I believe your opinion to them. Now, I've heard the man speak in tongues this morning and gave that interpretation. What would happen today, some of them is going to receive it, Lord, surely. That's right. I believe it. Now, it is written in the Bible that David, the little shepherd boy, was watching his father's sheep out behind the desert. And one day, a lion came in and got one of his father's lambs and run off with it. And that little shepherd boy with faith, what did he have to come against this lion? Not a modern rifle or gun, but he had a little slingshot. Amen. And he went after that lion. He killed that lion and brought that sheep back. Amen. A bear come in and got one. He went after that bear that could have Hallelujah. rushed him to the earth. But he didn't think about the size of the bear or the power of the lion or his swiftness or his inability with the slingshot. But when he was standing before Saul, the king, he said, Thy servant herded his father's sheep, and a lion come in and got one and run out. And I went after him and brought the sheep back. He said, The same God that delivered me from the hand, the paw of that bear, or the jaws of that lion, can also take this uncircumcised Philistine and hand him into my hand. How we know the story goes that he did slay, slew a man that was many, many times bigger than he was in a warrior. How it stumped Saul, that great king, great mighty man. How that that little boy could have such faith in a slingshot. No, not in a slingshot, but in God. Now, Lord, standing around this altar and laying here on this cot is God's sheep. Hallelujah. Little lambs, as it was to him. They have been caught up by a lion called cancer, a bear called TB, other diseases that's caught them and jerked them out and tear them to pieces. <coughs> Lord, I... I'm coming after them with a little slingshot called prayer of faith. It's not very much, but I know what it has done. And I know it's still the same God. I'm coming after them this morning to bring them back, Lord, to shady green pastures of good health, down by the still waters of peace, and wait for their flusterations to believe on you. I go after them with the armor that you gave to go in. The prayer of faith shall save the sick, and God shall raise them up. If they have did any sin, it shall be forgiven them. And Father, we go now to meet the enemy, to meet the lion, to meet the, the devil on every farm that he's in, called cancer, TB, Hodgson's disease, heart trouble. Yes. Any other disease, oh, we come to find him and bring this land back to the house of God again. In the name of Jesus Christ, we go to use this slingshot Hallelujah. that you have given us. Hallelujah. Be with us, Father, as we reverently approach thee now. In Jesus' name, I want you to keep your heads bowed. And we're coming to anoint with oil and lay hands on the sick, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Every Christian in here, put your faith.